Okay, so uh, we're looking at a breakdown of the frame breakdown of the game Syndicate. The greasy bloom has finally dis demystified. Okay, I did not see that earlier. That's that's a very descriptive t way to describe bloom. So uh, apparently it's a reboot of a '93 game. Um, and I didn't play it, but and I really haven't heard much about it. But apparently it has a huge bloom effect. Hmm. Uh, a great one. So, 12 years after it's released, we finally get a uh, render dot capture and someone breaking it down. It is time. Okay. So, what's the game about? It's a shooter. It's a PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 title, and PC. Um, single player. Oh, it has a co-op mode. Yeah, back when games came with co-op modes. <sighs> um, I have the trailer and you know, I can mute it so I don't get annoying things. It's it's a trailer that's uh, very heavily edited. That's some okay. That's that's a good nice gameplay uh, look. But uh, yeah, okay. Some screenshots. Hmm. This actually, this looks quite nice. I mean, it looks, you, ha you have the uh, light in the distance glowing on the, the thing here. This uh, panel, this uh, LCD panel looks very integrated into the environment. Doesn't look like a flat screen stuck out of, in, uh, out of place. Mm, yeah, a little bit of diffuse shading on it, yeah. yeah. Um, let's, let's just look at some more quickly. I wouldn't say this looks as good as the previous one, but it looks fine. Because that's a heck of a lot of bloom. It makes the place look like uh, someone smoked it up. <laughs> um, action shot. Oh, here's a here's some texturing indicative of the time period. I don't know how low quality that comes across, but it's like, oh yeah, that definitely you can kind of see the JPEG ish JPEG ishness of it. Um, ooh, you know what? They have a depth of field blur going on here. Hmm. So I wonder if we're gonna see more about that. And uh. Rain. Uh, honestly, for a 2012, 2013 game, it's pretty good looking. Pretty darn good looking. I think it's 2012, not 2013. Okay. Apparently there's chromatic aberration that makes the text look fuzzy. Uh, can I... Oh, I see. It has the red white blue here hmm. Hmm. does it do it for the text here yeah it does that's kind of that's like um what's it true type fonts that like a sub pixel rendered fonts yeah those um that's kind of doing it on purpose but this is yeah more just for aesthetics yeah right right i'm saying yeah this is a definitely on purpose and it has the effect of looking like a um, sub-pixel rendering font, but wrong. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay, so OpenGL and DX9, which is appropriate for the era, especially for targeting PCs. Mm. Uh, there's global illumination. New physics, uh, networking. I mean, this is not super descriptive of actually what it can do, but it is 
it is true to say that when you when you're working on your own technology, you can work on all of those things at the same time. Interesting that they had OpenGL internally. They mentioned that the text is a little hard to read with the chromatic aberration, but I kind of like it. It's oh yeah, I, I, I dig it. I just, I'm also not running it on a 10 or 1160 by 768 monitor. So Lower res, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. don't know how, how it differs on low resolution. Interesting. DX11 and 10 were there, but they just stuck with DX9. That's, that's a great statement. Well, we didn't want to use DX11 because we were already using DX9 and we didn't think the benefits were worth re-architecting everything. You know, in comes DX12 and everyone's like, ah, oh, but we already used DX11. We don't want to redo everything. Technical dead in games is real. Okay. Making sense for a title already in development. No. Definitely. Uh, what? That font, I, I don't like that. Fi. Something, something weird. Sorry. Is that just a ligature? Yeah, or is it's it like, actually like a kerning issue? <laughs> I think it's a kerning issue because, like, I think they just overlap in just the right way for the beams to connect. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. So we'll just <clears throat> ah, light map baker. Um, did got some uh, audio decoder. Uh, font shop. Okay. Got some third party stuff. Talking about how the game is put together. Well, that's kind of neat that they didn't have like everything into giant dot bin dot tar bar or whatever. What is it? Pack pack files. Yeah, just creating something monolithic. Yeah, a lot, yeah. Of, a lot of things do that way. Though. I mean, kind of makes sense from a we don't want the users to be implicitly able to just see everything, but. Mm. Well, for a lot of us, great, but okay. also it can probably cause problem to load all those individual files from the file system. That is, yeah, yeah, that is part of it. Yeah, and and uh, kind of yeah, binary formats and things like that. You just kind of put it all together. Can you not map files on Windows just like with Linux, where you don't load the entire file into memory? You just basically say, hey, I want to make this file on, on the hard drive readable. Or am I thinking of something else? I mean, it's easier to do that with a single file, right? <laughs> that is true. Yeah, I may be thinking of something else. Anyways. Okay, yeah. You can see everything. Um, the entire structure. Uh... Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, the that that time when when you developed a game, you just took the old game and started modifying it and then taking out the <laughs> old stuff. 
We definitely don't still do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm trying to give plausible deniability here. <laughs> oh, that's fun. They they a bunch of fixed function shader stuff that like they just emulate rather than trying to they just wrote wrote an em emulation system for it. Uh There's a whole bunch of files. I'm just going to read over them, see if there's anything that looks interesting. No texture cap. I mean, this is like, this is all the things you have in a game. Yay. Animations. Lots of animation and character stuff. Textures. Audio. Okay, now we get into the juicy details of the pipeline. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right, because it's like, that. well, I'm just running it on my Linux machine through DXVK. Seems to be another ligature for two Fs in a row. That's rough. Is there, where, where is... Oh, that frame buffer. Oh. Uh, and the last game. Oh, wait, um... He's in the middle of the screen, and then I realize I don't know which screen we're talking about. Oh, you're, yeah, it's um, the, the monospace bit, the file program for X engine, final frame buffer path. Mm. Yeah, I, and, uh, I didn't see it. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Fine. Starts rendering the rain. Oh, wait, no. There's a rain mask. Interesting. Oh, so this is the top-down view of the world, and all of these boxes are the inside. Wait, is my uh, is my video lagging behind yours or something? I, I think it is. We're looking at the image of the purple thing now <laughs> yeah single mesh which okay. results in the texture wait you can export into blender from render doc wait is that csv oh oh Oh, I'm sorry. I was like, what does a spreadsheet have to do with Blender? But it's the other kind of CSV. The um what's the what's this what does it CSV stand for here? Isn't it like the spreadsheet one? No. Uh, I I think it might be. I think it's probably exporting all the just the mesh data uh, as a CSV. Because it's, uh, really? it's just common, common separated list. I think that, that makes sense. Yeah, because like, if you're looking at it in render doc, right, you'll just have like a list, a raw dump of all the vertices and stuff. Maybe you're thinking of CSG. I might be. I, I very well might be. Uh... Yeah, that import CSV they had is the default Python CSV library. So. Yeah, so it's um, the format there, they get position.x, position.y, position.z. It's uh, yeah. an option with a 2D oh. password. I'm trying to think of. The um, I, I I'm I'm thinking of the 
type of geometry that is ge generated by just doing um, basically ray march a smooth sine distance fields on a bunch of different shapes mm. and combining them all um, with like unions and stuff. Solid geometry, I think. Yeah. Uh, CSG. Yeah, the blend yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, my brain failed me, but yeah, you can get some nice renders or get some a, a better renderer to look at all the data. It's a cool format to use because it's it's really just you know it's. it's just... Uh huh. But it's like OBJ, but different. Actually, simpler to parse, I think, actually. Kind of. Yeah. Actually, yeah, definitely easier. Okay. So this is the the rain texture of which it just kind of looks like a checkerboard, noisy checkerboard, a pink noisy checkerboard. Okay, we got a depth prepass. How is my video keep desynchronized? I'm, I'm at least a while behind you now. <laughs> If the audio doesn't well, desync, then that's good enough. Something, because yeah. I'm I'm looking at the Git GitHub page for the CSV import thing. And that's that's you, wild. You know, that, it's yeah. that behind. Uh, really, really strange. I just had a thought. A Z prepass is like a visit as a poor man's visibility buffer rendering, where you just render out all of the geometry to a depth buffer, and you don't do anything when you render it other than writing the depth value. Mm. That way, when you go back, you can remove all of your overdraw in your pixel shader computation by just being like, hey, we already. We, we 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 know what depth of value this will have, so if you're behind it, just don't render. Whereas a visibility buffer does the depth prepassing quotes and then stores what actual pixel or what fragment shader should be run or stores the values that should be processed later on. So the depth uh, prepass stuff you can you can do stuff like writing motion vectors um, also when you're doing right, that right. Kind of thing. I and guess then, the um, vis Oh, sorry. oh, I was just gonna say. Uh, also, depth equals is uh, um, generally what you do uh, uh, when, you, yeah. when you're actually doing a rasterization effort. I, I'm yeah. curious to anyone who's implemented this. Uh, how much benefit does it provide if you're not using lower LED models? Because I know a lot of people create occlusion occlusion geometry when they're doing something like this, so that the prepass is cheaper. Is that basically required to get a benefit out of it, or? Will uh, using just the base models work too? I I would assume you'd render the appropriate LOD in either case, in either the pre-pass or the regular pass. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because uh, it's got to be the the depth result has got to be representative of the actual geometry you're going to be drawing later. Yeah, yeah, but there, there is another technique, uh, occlusion culling, like uh, you draw low poly geometry, uh, and uh, mm, you just uh, check amount of uh, fragments that you render, and uh, if it's uh, it it value is higher than one, you draw uh, higher. Uh, High poly geometry. Oh, I see. I see. I, I yeah, I know that one too. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. Some wires but got but crossed here they are using uh, uh, depth prepass. I'm not sure. Uh, actually, I have a question. Uh, do people use uh, that prepass in modern games? I don't know. Yes. Think because, so. Because, because I try. I tried it in. Um, in uh, my project and 
I've never got any improvements in performance. So um, generally, the way that it's used is to uh, like high Z calling kind of thing. Uh, you basically you you create a hierarchical uh, representation of like uh, yeah, minimum and maximum depths for like is the for the MIP chain on your um, uh, for the the that depth result. And uh, yeah, basically, um, yeah, that that helps with calling stuff. Oh, okay. I figured people would bundle the the two passes, but okay. Uh, it's interesting. Thank you. That that tracks with my understanding. Trippy. Which part do you want now? Sorry, I'm looking at the Oh, the depth um, RGBA buffer rendered at the same time as the depth prepass. Oh yeah, I was yeah I was looking at that. So it's, it's interesting. Uh, the they're encoding it into a, a yeah eight bit values. That's interesting. Yeah, but then certain places there's wrapping in different axes and like different um, not axes different channels. So like the left side, there's blue bands vertical, but on the right side, the blue bands are going into the scene. Maybe they store uh, normals or something like that. Uh, well, if you look there, it's you're basically kind of, um, it's not really a derivative. It's kind of like, but the rate at which it changes is kind of like giving you a, a sense of the rate of change with a kind of directional thing there. On the, like, if you look on the gun and stuff, it's uh, yeah, if you look at the one that has like the most, uh, the finest bands and stuff, it's like, yeah, it's almost got like a suggestion of the direction of the surface based on the rate at which the depth is changing. Because we're looking at like the, like the, the higher precision, like the, the <clears throat> least significant bits, I guess. So the red channel just looks like a depth buffer and it looks like a smudge on my screen, but you can barely make out all of the, the things in the, the background. I, they they kind of stand out when I zoom in and out. So it looks like the red channel is just regular depth. I think it's it's the coarsest representation. The way that they're describing it is that it's like um, that that the, so you're writing to eight bit targets, right? So it's it's uh, so your 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 initial one here is is just your whole numbers, uh, and then your your second one is the fractional component multiplied by two fifty six, and then the uh, oh all oh, right. I guess yeah, it's RGBA eight, meaning it's just a thirty two bit buffer, but it's being rendered as a RGBA image here there is an explanation down below by the way oh yeah yeah no, Again, i was reading from that like, I, I didn't just arrive just, that. <laughs> just read and sometimes they'll answer your questions uh, yeah if you don't want to store a depth texture just use a color texture Yeah, that's that's a lot of multiplications by two fifty six. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Render doc is extensible and lets you do some fun things like having a custom shader in your previews. That is really neat. Being able to like live edit stuff in Render doc, I haven't uh -huh. actually figured out how to do that yet. Oh, oh, this is the sky, this white section. Okay. Motion vectors, depth of field. Mm. So, wait, how many times are we rendering the opaque geometry? 
Um, probably twice. Um, well, hopefully twice because of the depth repass, but it sounds like they're doing it thrice because this is for the you, motion vectors. You can bind multiple targets when you when you render. So you you'd be doing multiple raids. Um, well, I hope they're doing that. Okay, it, it may actually be a separate pass. I guess I, I haven't read too close. Linear depth of field. Oh, yeah, that 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 guns depth of field. Here, here's the channel storing how much depth of field to do. Hmm. And then the motion vectors are in the red and green channels, which makes sense if you're doing vertical and horizontal motion. Uh, distortion. Rain and water, yeah, that's a good source of distortion. On the thrice thing, do we have a, a four version of that? Or does it, does I mean, that then you start getting into things like quaternary and quintanary. Um, but that's that's for ternary. I don't know what a four mm -hmm. for thrice would be. Sounds like a question for Chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> I dare you to do that. <laughs> uh, okay, so noise map. Um, I noticed that the edges are like bl blended out to zero so that it it doesn't have weird discontinuities. Um, it says quadruple, which is not correct. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, the normal base distortion stuff is interesting because it's yeah, they definitely still do stuff like that. It's, yeah, it's basically just uh, yeah, you, you can do different stuff with that. You basically, you can you can refract through that like it's like it's a surface to get a text word, or also uh, just use it as like a UV offset kind of thing. So I'm, not, I'm not sure where you're at because I'm, yeah, the video. I'm, that I'm starting I'm to look is... at the um, blending operations, which okay. I've always had a hard time understanding because it's all fixed function hardware, but the fixed function hardware is just running math, but they bake it into the hardware so it's really fast at doing texture fetches and writes and additions and stuff, and it's like, um, so. So wait. Oh, the... oh, and the the values get clamped to one is the thing that. No, they don't. They don't get clamped. Uh. So what's the trick here with blending normal maps? to do it in integer space. Zero to one. I'm going to leave and rejoin so I can get something closer to current okay. video. <laughs> okay. Uh. Okay. Opaque geometry. Okay, now we're rendering opaque geometry and their textures and 
and doing their you know, forward and doing the uh, you know lighting computations or at least some of it. Okay, so yeah, this is for rendering. Okay, interesting. You know, when you look at the game like this, oh, oh, okay. So this is like a, a, a very low quality JPEG. This is the original image. If you click through, yeah. A and it's, it's well, well worth doing that because this looks like, wow, this game really does look like it's from 20, 2012. No, this is what looks like from 2012 without lighting and blending and uh, bloom and stuff. Uh, I thought it was... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was like, this game looks like, you know, an NES title level of detail with how much fuzziness there is, and it's just compressed. Hmm. <sighs> First thing... Yeah, I, I know how that is with... Uh... Yeah, laying out web pages like that. It's I, I, on my side. I've I have uh, had to uh, <laughs> I've, uh, yeah, I had to start uh, using compressed previews and then have that link to the full res because otherwise I'm you know trying to load close to 100 well, megs of pictures. Yeah, crashes the computer unknowingly due to out of memory. Well, it's annoying and slow for people to look at, kind of thing. Uh -huh. So they render a full screen quad, but I see a diagonal. So um, this is a this is a full screen triangle. This is not a full screen. Sorry, these are two triangles instead of a single full screen triangle. Shame. Not doing the cool, the cool yeah. way. And cool thing where you just draw a giant triangle that gets clipped. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't use a cube map directly. I've never seen the video do anything like this before because it's got you looking at the just the raw image uh, for the at the beginning of section five. It's like you're definitely not looking at that anymore. <laughs> well, it doesn't help that I did zoom the um, article in so I can fill my screen up. And the no, no, I I just mean um, the, I, the video keeps oh. lagging behind. I don't know what's going on with that. It's very strange. Uh, is there some setting I can change? Well, it seems... I, I don't know. I guess nobody else is having an issue with it. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> uh, I am using Zoom through the browser, so that's probably... Yeah. That might be it. Um, oh. Okay, there, there's no interesting settings in the, the screen sharing settings. Okay, so they, they draw each cube map face as a separate quad. So they, they produce six draw calls. That's fascinating. Because it's like, it's oh, not that many tr draw calls, but it's it's still like, well, why didn't they just use a cube map? It's like, well, why? Why, why do they need to? Inter interesting uh, if if they have artifacts on edges. I wonder if that's like a feature issue if they didn't have uh, hardware support for cube maps or something. Very very well might have. I don't know what kind of state DX9 was in for that kind of thing.
I thought this was an eye. Like this was like the iris. Oh yeah. Not a sewer pipe. I thought um solar array on a satellite. Yeah, it totally that I see that too. I can see the pipe in sewer, it just doesn't want to look like that in my head. Yeah. But, but a game in 2012 is using compressed textures. You should too. It's not that hard. <laughs> Ooh. A diffuse? A specular? A normal? Compressed textures are great, except for when they're not. That's, that's, yeah. that's all I have to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, this is a light map here. Oh. Yeah, it's like paged or something, looks like. Yeah. How how big is this image? Whoa. It, it doesn't look that detailed. Well, it's JPEG or it's PNG and I'm getting I think some blending here. Wait, if I download the image. How, it'll tell me how big it is, like pixels. Kind of makes sense. Yeah, if you if you kind of look at the the rendered result, then it's kind of like a it's oh. like a scale factor for the textures at a, at a very low resolution. Well, the it my file system is telling me this is a one K texture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm seeing that in the browser here too. Where's wait? Does it? Oh, it does show you. Huh? I could have just done that. RGBM. Yeah, it's red, green, and blue, and then a magnitude. So it's it's like ah. Um, I guess about that too, in the fourth channel. And then we have YCOCG, which is not the same thing, but it's kind of a similar concept because it's storing the magnitude, and then the CO and CG are parameters to color space. Yeah, like a chroma thing, yeah. Yeah, why is luminance? And then, yeah. Uh, it tells about resolution later, so kind of we just need to read a bit more instead <laughs> of... Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Hundred seventy triangles for a bag. The player seventy eight thousand uh, seventy eight hundred. The gun twenty eight hundred twenty seven hundred. Oh, that's really cool. I'm just imagining some gameplay or some game, some game developer spent a whole month getting these silly animations and player camera to work so that you can look down and watch yourself walk, and then just mm. felt really giddy when it worked really well, and you know, kind of just worked instead of you know glitched glitched out as I'm sure the first versions did. Sometimes what they do is they uh, they handle all the first person uh, geometry like completely separately, and it's basically like smashed down to like like these very very small amount of uh, space right at the front of the NDC. Um, it's kind of interesting, but it's, so it doesn't clip into anything, um, things like that. Um, yeah, this is not doing that. It's interesting. Yeah, having a separate mesh for the first person camera is a very um, attractive workflow, but it, it 
does cause pain and suffering in the long run when you're trying to figure out why this looks weird when in the multiplayer mode that you added and it's like right because the first person camera is different than your third person one or th first person model is different than your third person one and oof. i remember seeing like youtube meme about just videos about like first person looks like this and third person looks like this gamers notice this <laughs> yeah <laughs> Or, or like um, the the one I'm thinking of is Team Fortress Two. The the place you shoot from is not where you think it is because in the 3D space you're like you're pointing out of your eye, but in your first person it looks like it's coming out of the gun, and it's just this weird divergence. Like a parallax that... issue. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So let's get to some shading. Uh... BRDFs are not exclusive to PBR, as it turns out. I used to think that. Yeah. It's kind of like a generalization of the of the like just the fun shading model kind of thing. It's like how much brightness do you you get here? Yep. Uh, so you got Lambertian and diffuse. You got Torrent Sparrow for specular. And hybrid normal, hybrid normals. Um, then you got some Fred's and Fresnels, dielectric skin, and conductives. Uh, these are not terms I've heard. Like uh, Ashik Kim, Ashikmin, and Shirley. Surely, I, I bet I know who that is, but uh, other than that, I've, yeah, I haven't heard any of these in particular. Like, I, I've, I've heard Torrance before, but in this context, Torrance-Sparrow implies Torrance and Sparrow work together to come up with a BRDF for a simple specular model. And I have not heard of that, because my gaming career, gaming, my career, my interest in it all picked up in 2016, so most of this stuff that was just it was before my time hmm, yeah 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 surely is peter surely yeah oh it is oh nice of uh yeah ray tracing in one weekend uh fame. nice um their face met or face textures are pretty great <laughs> oh oh got it Hmm. It, it looks fine in the final, but it it definitely I'm like, am I a serial killer? What am I looking at here? <laughs> Ugh. They have a wrinkle map. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Huh. If that's like scaling AO contribution or something. Else. Probably. Oh, and then the wrinkle normal map. So they have like a normal normal map, and then they have a wrinkle map that's like very, very sharp edges. Interesting yeah. that they're not combined, because you'd think they'd be combined, but... Hmm. I wonder if they do some sort of distortion on it or something when the face moves. That might I be why they need the mask to distinguish, because like I see on the forehead here, there's red, blue, or red, blue, green, all blend together, but they're like, um, I don't know. Interesting. Wrinkle mask oh. used to blend from the wrinkle normal based on the facial animation. Okay, so mm. it is some sort of something to do with the. Okay, yeah, that actually makes sense. Yeah, so you you base it on the on the animation, so you could have them kind of like come in and out kind of thing. I could see the thickness being like a uh, a way to mimic subsurface scattering without actually having to do that computation. Mm -hmm. Oh, shading gradient map. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so they have shadows, and every object gets one shadow based on the closest light. 
which that's actually not a bad um approximation because it's like well how many lights are going to cast a shadow? Probably many, but probably one of them is going to be stronger than all of the others. And if you want to show the strongest shadow, then just do that one. Wait, what is this? So why are we rendering and extruding in an inverted model? I don't know. Stencil shadows. Oh. So this is what stencil shadows are. Or It's funny the the video feed now has you looking at the <laughs> the, the lighting uh, uh, the, the lighting <laughs> downloading the image. It's like, uh, it's like several minutes behind now. <laughs> so wow. it's almost like something like half speed or something. I my the, your internet connection to Zoom is getting you know sent through a, a time machine. <laughs> I'm I'm curious to see if that comes through on the recording or not because that's. That's, that's very, very strange. Blah. Yeah, if you're only rendering one shadow from one light, is it interpolating the... S Whoa. Uh... Yeah, I'm totally getting that one now, I think. Okay, so we rendered all the opaque stuff. Now we can do some of the more decals and emissives and transparent stuff. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Ugh. Oh, the alpha showing it's not as splotchy. It's it's more there's some nice paint splatters. <clears throat> I wonder if they do anything clever with that. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting that the emissive textures sorry, emissive objects are rendered separately from the opaque ones. Hmm. That is interesting. These are actually decals, huh? Yeah. Huh. 
We got we gotta get our fog in. Uh. <laughs> it's interesting. It, it renders it all again. How many times does it render this whole scene? Jeez. That seems at least slightly problematic. I think you could probably <laughs> could probably combine some of this. Or at least like use the depth or something. I just feel like this re-rendering yes. everything kind of doesn't like a huge amount of sense. This is wild. But I guess yeah, they did say it was it was all four rendered, so um, potentially uh, you don't have the option to do a deferred. Oh right. Oh yeah. If it's all forward, then I guess you kind of have to do this. Uh, let's distort the main screen. But it's like only the floor is getting distorted. Oh, right, for the water, right, mm -hmm. water on the ground. Um, is that just, well, previously computed normal texture with cumulative elements? Just... So this says deferred to me or some sort of something operating on the image itself. maybe but you can yeah. see it's um the distortion isn't being applied to the hands but it totally is happening to the edges of the 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 hands like here yeah like you can watch the ripple roll down the guy the, the arm and the, uh, around exactly. the gun so I think oh, it's yeah, doing it yeah, post. It's like, right, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, trying to pull geometry from where it, well, it would be behind the arms, but it doesn't have data there. Ah. Yeah, you, you can our... do some stuff with that. You, yeah, you can mask that based on the, the delta and the depth, but um, it doesn't look like it did that. Yeah. Got, got in our lens flare. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, so. we, we, we draw our rain. Oh, yeah. Oh, that looks nice. Looks like a rainy day. I like their um the glare on the edge of the screen is cool. Oh here? I'm not sure exactly where you're at. Oh right. Um glare on the edge of what screen? Uh they got a video uh, example of how the glare appears on the edge of the screen. It's it's just a little uh it's just a little like uh kind of uh Lens dirt kind of mask that they're applying. Oh. Look at the edgy texture thing. You know, I think you got ahead of us because I, I hadn't gotten to the clear yet. <laughs> Oh, sorry, sorry. I yeah, I like I say, I'm I am <laughs> decent to mess on video, so I'm, I'm you, yeah. <laughs> you you went from being behind to being ahead, so I, I'm pretty sure there's a time machine involved somewhere here. 
Yeah, I'm trying to keep up. Just just uh, having it up on my computer here. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Uh, yeah, the the lens flare at the edge. Classic lens flare where you just draw a sprite, uh, you know, a, a transparent sprite. Or uh, what is that on his head? Oh, trap floating error message. Oh, bugger. My personal buddy toy. Hmm. Yeah, that uh, method of doing the, um, the lens flares. Uh, yeah, just additive transparency. Because you're just adding light, basically. It's lorem ipsum, but in English. <laughs> Gotta draw our UE or UI. what we've been waiting for. Bloom. Hmm. The UI player is interesting. They're talking about um, yeah, render UI elements, same res, uh, then again at a 1 8th resolution, then do a blur on the, uh, yeah, like a separable blur on the small resolution one. You see oh. the glow around, around the stuff. Which kind of cool. I do like this color split thing that they have, the chromatic aberration. It's nice. I like it. <laughs> it has like five or six different color bands in it. It's, uh, I don't know if I have it in there, but it's cool. How many draw calls do they do? I have to assume all of them. <laughs> <laughs> How many you got? Bloom is done in a similar way, or get, uh, sorry, not not based on generating that, map. or it. Oh, okay, so they have kind of math based on luminance. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, and then if it's above a certain threshold, then it participates. That's actually, that's an interesting way to do that. Huh. That's actually really interesting. Huh. Yeah, on the video, you just highlighted the word surely. <laughs> Jeez. Way, way, way the hell back. Jeez. This is really interesting about the, the bloom thing, though, because it's... Isn't that just how you're supposed to do it? You know, 
I guess I've never really implemented Bloom myself, so. Well, it, it seems to be describing, you know, a, a proper blurring based on contribution of surrounding pixels rather than, um, than uh, you know, just downsampling it and doing nearest neighbor. Or um, well, it also seems like I just mean like the the fact that like the the dark pixels get um, is is basically you're only getting that that light. Um, uh, bleed, you know, around the areas where there is light, you know, you just kind of like zero out the contribution below a certain level. Yeah. It's an interesting approach. Yeah. That's, that's, I guess, kind of what I mean is like the only people talking about this way of doing it is after this game came out, so. Hmm. Uh... This non power up to or is it is. Interesting. Inseparable box blur. Or Gaussian. Hmm. Well, so color times color for an sRGB conversion. <laughs> yeah. Good that. Well, it's only completely wrong. It's fine. I mean, they, cer <laughs> they certainly actually seem to be doing a depth of field kind of thing where they really blur it which is neat hmm. whole lot of whole lot of code I'm not going to sit there and try to pick and understand right to the yeah. FF obligatory in that code with all the buffers yeah the FF yeah, yeah. that's rough and the code is really visible. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're. Yeah, I see it now. <laughs> color grading. We don't even do HDR, and we still have color grading. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? 16 slices? Yeah. Hmm. Occlusion qu These are all occlusion queries at different depths. Uh, Interesting. These are Vulcan uh, commands. This is like directly signed on. Yeah, some DXPK. Because it's it, okay. being run on Linux, as it, as it turns out. Okay. Um, and they definitely didn't do a Linux port in 2012, a native Linux port. Also, yeah, Vulcan wasn't really around until like 2012. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've been talking about time traveling. I don't see what's so weird about a game yeah. release yeah. using an API that didn't exist. Getting hung up on things happening in order. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's this causality you guys are talking about? Why are you so concerned? So it's using occlusion queries to count pixels based on their luminance. Uh, 
to build a histogram of the frame. That's interesting. So it's like an auto exposure kind of a notion, I guess, maybe. That's, that's, yeah. that's where I've seen it done that way. OK, so this is like early histogram. Um, not early, I guess, but just a, a way to do histograms. I don't understand really why it's being done in slices like that. Uh, Count the number of gray values of on each history. Finally does all of the things. Puts them all together with a little bit of vignette. It does look pretty cool with everything put together. Yeah. I don't know, it's, I, it doesn't look that bad. The uh, the lens flares and the bloom and everything really is pretty cool. I mean, it certainly speaks to a difference in um, time where every game, like every AAA game, has these effects in it. But before 2012, like in 2012 and before, I wouldn't expect it from a lot of games because it's like that's a lot of extra rendering stuff to do. Mm. But it turns out it 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 do look nice. Uh, so it's interesting they're using um, yeah 16 by 16 by 16 for the lookup table. So it's uh, industry standard now is uh, 32 bit uh, or 32 on a side. So it's like a um, yeah, and you keep that at like a um, sixteen-bit color depth, so that your interpolated samples are like, you know, good. Yeah. Yeah, interesting that it's smaller, but um, I guess they were more space conscience conscientious than we are, or rather, yeah. thirty sixteen-bit is just fine for them and. Everything's scaled appropriately, so now we do 32 bit. Yeah, it's much more, um, um, yeah, it's uh, probably, yeah, appropriate for, for the constraints on like memory and stuff. The, um, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually playing with something like this where, uh, you, you can actually like, like, lerp these and stuff that like run a shader that runs every frame and, and uh, do some like stateful stuff with the, with that lookup table. It's kind of fun. Yeah. I think there's a lot of stuff going on in the post-processing, but that's because at the end of the day, in terms of graphics, um, that's what we spend a lot of time needing to think about because it's all the stuff that people that you know combines together to make the final image. You know, mm -hmm. the different things that we we can do to uh, enhance the output, like this effect here looks real real dope. You know the the uh, color banding, not banding, but uh, chromatic aberration separating into three different you know objects entirely. But then it's done completely as a post processing thing rather than you know trying to render the scene like that. Oh, definitely, definitely, yeah. Which would be pretty interesting, but I don't know how effective it'd be. <laughs> uh. So you got motion blur, depth of field, a radial blur, like menus, unsharpened, exposure, local contrast, bloom, lookup table, color correction, film grain, and a vignette. That's it. And it's not even doing anti... Oh, FXAA anti-aliasing. <laughs> yeah, that does, that does look nicer. It almost blurs it in a sense, but I, I know that's kind of what it's it's already a blurry image or not blurry, but it's already been blurred, so 
and we got to slap some UI on here, which seems to be very well integrated into the scene. I mean, this UI element is not sharp and crisp, but like blurry like the rest of the scene. <laughs> You're asking how many draw calls? Many. <laughs> Actually, I guess that could be one draw call with a mesh, still. Yeah, a lot of movement. Right Trying to get through this. Uh, we got some menus, which it's not sexy. The menu backgrounds are really interesting. Whoa, what is that background? I don't know. It's, it's very interesting, just kind of abstract shapes. I dig it. Yeah. Uh, dark vision. Oh, it's like for viewing enemies that you can't immediately see. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Triplanar projection, add, add lines to the objects in the scene. Like triplanar, triplanar mapping is like drawing textures in in 3d space or in, in in world space instead of object space or uv space i like it mm. for doing these kinds of global effects uh, yeah and you can also very easily do like um yeah as if you do this like on the on the image you can yeah just like distance to a point is very easily uh you can do that so it's, you can do yeah. like, uh, something like, like a pulse coming out from a certain point or something yeah Virtual space. <laughs> is there a space in between? No, no, these are just, it's a very big font. I thought there's like a space in between each letter. Hmm. Why is the bloom so wild? That is a good question. Because it was the early 2010s. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the style of that. Oh, whoa. Uh. Wow, that's actually in the game. <laughs> Wow. That was crazy. Looking at the one that gets totally blown out. Yeah, that's that is something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I can understand like I want there to be bloom in my game, said the said the executive. And the game designers and pro programmers delivered, but they're also trying to make a whole ass game, so uh, they, you know, can't go through every polygon and you know area collider, and some mistakes like this creep through, and you get some wild blooming. Uh. This was a whole month of work. Yeah, it sounds about right. There's a lot of knowledge in this thing. Um, ooh, link to link to game engine. Uh, you know, they say it's artisanal, but I really would prefer if they said it was. A, they say traditional. Um, you know, traditional method, traditional approach. I think they should just say artisanal. Because it sounds more authentic. Be like, well, they were they were artisanal game engine developers back in the early aughts and two thousands. Okay, bibliography. Uh, what's the what's it? ombre? Is that like hombre, like friend, in Spanish? Uh, ombre is Spanish with the H. It's like Spanish for guy or something, and then, uh, but I don't know how to pronounce this word, ombre or something. It's like French for shadow. 
Mm. Okay. That makes more sense <laughs> than Ombre like without the Umbra. H. <laughs> Uh, like Umbra for the, like, uh, with stars and stuff. Okay, well, that's getting sidetracked. So that was that was a good article. Does people want to say something before we end recording? I like I like the balloon. I think it's cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I kind of want to go look up some like um, reviews and people talking about the game from 2012 and see if they really like. They they hammer on the balloon being over the top, or if it's like do yeah, I learned I learned about bloom here. I didn't know how it was done before, but it makes sense. Yeah, and, and like this is actually from my understanding how this bloom works. It's kind of a good way of doing it. I mean, I'm sure there's ways to improve it, but um, it, yeah. Video just got to the ketchup splatters with the recent paintball session. I, I'm, I'm glad we uh, found that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey. Okay, I think we can. Where's the. Yeah, stop recording.